Here is question 1b part 3 from the 2016 exam. So here's our question and you can see I've just drawn the um, tree diagram up there again. Um, so that's how I've displayed the data there for you. And now we want to look at the question associated with this. So we've got three shoppers chosen at random. Okay, so we want to find the probability that all three shoppers have a regular shopping day and buy their groceries on the weekend. Okay, and then after that we've got to support our answer with some statistical reasoning, including the any assumptions made. So I'll come to that later. To start with, let's focus on the pro calculating the probability. Okay, so the criteria that they have found is that they are talking about somebody that has a regular shopping day and has buying their groceries on the weekend. So we're going to look at our different combinations here and say which of those combinations meet that criteria. So what we've got is RD is a regular shopping and it's on the weekday. So that does not meet the criteria. The second one, regular on the weekend, that does meet the criteria. The next one, um, not regular weekday, doesn't meet the criteria. And the last one, not regular weekend, also does not meet the criteria. So our probability, we can just read off, is 0 0.233192. So that's the probability for a single person chosen at random that they will have um, this criteria. Okay, But we need to think about it in terms of three shoppers. So what we need to do is we need to think about probability of shopper number one and the probability of shopper number two and the probability of shopper number three. So we've got three shoppers. They all for this one have the same criteria. Remember in probability terms and means multiply for probability. So the probability of all of that added together or multiplied together in this case is 0 0.233192 and that is raised to the power of three. So you could also write that as 0 0.233192 times itself, so times 0 0.233 times 0 0.233. Um, so either of those versions is how you could write it. And when we put that into our calculator, um, let me just do that. That comes out with an answer, and it's slightly different from the one that's given on the paper. Um, so 0.22, sorry, where am I? So that comes out to an answer of 0 0.01268. Okay. So slightly different from the one on the notes. Okay. Then, so that's the first part of the question, is finding the probability for all three people. Now we need to do the second part of the question here. And it says support it with statistical statements and reasoning, including any assumptions made. So one of the key assumptions, as soon as we're talking about any kind of statistical model, um, whether it's a probability model, the normal distribution model for your data, any kind of model that we talk about, the, one of the assumptions we always have is independence. Okay, so you can always talk about this assumption of independence. And now what is it that we mean in this particular situation? Because just telling me independence is not enough. We need to be specific for this situation. So if I think about what I've got, is we've got two different types of variables. We've got whether or not they are a regular or a non-regular shopper. And the second variable is whether they shop on the weekend or the weekday. So we're assuming that those two variables are independent. Okay, So we're assuming that, let me change my pen, um, 
that whether um, people have a regular shopping day is independent um, from whether they shop on the weekend or weekday. So they shop on the weekend. Okay, so that's what it is that we're assuming. It's one of our assumptions that we can make. Okay, now another assumption that we could discuss is talking about the sampling component. Okay, so in this particular case we have been sampling with out replacement okay now we can talk about and discuss whether that is a good thing or not a good thing so if I just go oh no I haven't got it there um, if I go back to the original question it talked about right in the beginning part question under 1a it talked about that there were 559 shoppers Okay, so with that number of shoppers, what do we think about that sample size? Is that a big sample size? Is it a small sample size? Do we think that that's going to give us good representative data or not? Okay, so there's a whole pile of reasoning that we could go into um, there with it. Okay, and I'll cover more of that in one of the future questions as well. So that was question 1B, part 3.